Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well still. Welcome back to a bonus upload. Before we get into this bonus upload, though, a couple links. As you all know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership are in the description below. The merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost you a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's bonus, shall we? All right, guys, tonight I have DJ and DJ's friend, Robert. Robert is the son-in-law of the gentleman who had the experience with what we think a juvenile dog man. DJ, Robert, how are you guys? Pretty good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm doing well. Thanks for both of you taking some time out of your evening to uh, spend with us and kind of clear the air on what, what happened. Um, so Robert, I'm going to turn the floor over to you and kind of ask a couple questions. Um, what, what, what happened that day? I guess you were in the barn with your father-in-law. What, what really happened that night? Well, that night, uh, me and my father-in-law, he owns a big farm. Okay. And, um, uh, I was, he is a elderly man and he has uh, he has no way of really um, loading hay, but he's got um, he's got one of those sickles that you know that you stick in through the hay, yep, and bring it up. Well, we had had a there was a, there was four of them in a row. And uh, he said, if we can get these four in, he said, uh, that'll be, that'll be, you know, that'll be great. Um, for, for what I need for the next week. And I said, well, sure, you know. Right. Because, uh, you know, he's helped me and I'm married to his wife and. I mean, they built us a house, and right. I mean, they've just been, you know, super duper to us. So it's the least I could do for him. So um, we uh, we got on there. Well, he got on the tractor, and uh, I was kind of backing him up, you know, a little bit, you know. Come on back, come on back, a little, you know, forward, forward, you know. Well, when he went forward, I heard a noise, like a, I don't know how to describe it to you. Okay. <clears throat> it's like a, like a scream, maybe. But it wasn't like a human scream. All right. Something, um, something you've never heard before. I mean, you're from, you're from down south, like the, the Virginia, West Virginia area, and I'm sure you're a hunter, so you've heard, you know, noises out in the woods. Just something that you haven't really heard before. Yeah, nothing that I have ever heard. Okay. All right. Nothing that I've heard. So, but he, 
couldn't hear it. Okay. Because, you know, a tractor is pretty loud. Right, right. He's older and he's on the tractor, so he's above what's going on. Right, he didn't really know what was going on. Well, at first I thought I was hearing things. You know, because it was almost... It was almost dark. Okay. <clears throat> it was a little bit past dusk. And, um... Then it started getting louder. And then I knew there was something going on. I knew that there was... You know... I was hoping and praying that it wasn't, you know, a human. Right, like a kid or something or whatever. Yeah, like a kid or or something like that. Yeah. So then I told, um, I told my father-in-law, I, you know, you know how you wave your hands in front of somebody to stop. Yeah, yeah. I told him, to, you know, stop, stop, stop. He said, what in the world's going on? <laughs> I said, I said, there's something in, I said, there's something in here. He said, what do you mean there's something in there? I said, well, I said, I heard it once. And then I heard it again. And the second time I knew it wasn't just me. Right. So he jumped down and, uh, of course, you know, we, you know, we're, we're both lawful gun carrying, uh, you know, we both have our gun permits. Right. Right. And we always carry them when we're out on the farm because you never know what you're going to run into. Oh, absolutely. You know, you don't know if you're going to run into a bear or whatever. And, um, so we got to looking and, uh, he told me to kind of stay back a little bit. Well, he already had his gun pulled and I wasn't going to pull mine because I didn't want me to actually shoot him. <laughs> right. So I figured, well, he's got a a forty five. If he can't get it done with a forty five, well then we're both gone. You know. Yeah. And uh after he got to digging a little bit through the hay, um, it was one of those big rolls of hay. Yeah. I would say he told me they go between three and four hundred pounds. That's what he told me. Okay. And this guy has been a farmer. Let's see, I've been married to her. He's probably been a farmer thirty years. Okay. Every day of his life. He doesn't know nothing else. That's right. all he knows. He farm. just lives and breathes farm work. Yeah, I've got family up here that, you know, know nothing but farming. So, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So he got to checking and got to looking. And um, I really couldn't tell. Because he wanted me to kind of stand back. Right. <clears throat> but the the feet was kind of like on a... It wasn't anything I'd ever seen before. Okay. So when he, when, like he, a, when he was digging out, you were you were kind of behind him or on the side of the other hay on that side of the hay bale. Yeah, I was kind of on the. He was directly in front of me. Okay. okay? I was kind of on the. On the right side of him. Okay. 
but I was back about three or four feet. All right. It's not very far at all because I knew if something was to happen, you know, I wasn't going to let, you know, something happen to him and me not, you know, jump in there and help him. Right, right. I mean, he's your father. No, I wasn't going to let that happen. Right, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when he first, he was the one that saw it first. Could you tell by, like, what his face looked like? What, like, what was his expression when before you even realized what the heck was going his, on? His demeanor totally changed. Okay. Totally changed. Uh, his exact words were, I don't know what the fuck this is. Right. <laughs> that was his exact words. And, uh, so come to find out, it was probably about, about four or five feet tall. Okay. But what got me about it was that the, um, was that the teeth were like razor blades that were inverted, okay. like backwards. Yeah, like a snake kind of mouth. Yeah. Hmm. Now it's still alive in front of you at this point, correct? No, I don't, well... I don't know if it was alive or not because where he had stuck it. See that, see that, that thing, that, um, that sickle. Yeah. It had been stuck by that sickle. Yeah. It's like a big pole that's on the back of a tractor that sticks in, in the hydraulics yeah, from the tractor, yeah. pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what they are. Yeah, exactly. And it's really long because. Yeah. He has to pick up 400 pounds. Yeah, they're about 10 feet, weight. about 10 feet, 15 feet long. Oh, yeah. Yep. And even when he is doing that, he has to get a good run. You know, he don't just drive up to it. No, you got to back right he into the son of a gun. <laughs> some momentum going. Yep, yep. The stick in that hay bale. And then he has to hit the hydraulic to make it come up. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Completely. So, so that way he can, you know, so that way he can maneuver it. All right. And uh, I said, uh, I said, well, what are you going to do? Now, what are you He's thinking? Still, what do you think in this thing is at the time when you first see it? What are you? What are your thoughts in your head? I was scared to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, I had heard of this. Um, was it a dog man? Yeah. Um, I had heard about it. Um, I don't know if you ever listened to Howard Stern. Yeah. There's a guy on there named uh, Sean the Stutterer. Yep. And he is totally obsessed with it. And that's where I got to, you know. Right, hear about it. Kind of learn about it and stuff like that. And, you know, you know, all that stuff, you know. What I thought, you know, it's mostly made up. It's, you know, it's comedy, you know, to get you to listen and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Until it's right in your face, hanging on the back yeah, of your tractor. Your face, and then you're like, oh, "What the hell?" Yeah, yeah. Now, what else can you can you kind of give us a brief description of what this thing looked like, um, hanging there? Like you already told us about the teeth, and like uh, about four or five feet. So it was pretty small. It wasn't very big for. I mean, because usually, well, about four or five feet long. Okay. Well, what? How about the hair color? Well, the 
thing was is that we didn't have real good light. Okay. Because we wasn't expecting to be out there long. Right. Yeah. And um, his tractor lights. See, he doesn't have a in. His tractor is not got a cab. Okay, so there's no lights in the back or anything like that. Right. There's no right. So all we had was cell phone lights. Okay. And it looked to me like a. I want to say a darkish brown, maybe black color. All right. Somewhere in that area. I could be wrong because, you know, then again, I mean, I was so flipped out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I was, I was scared well, to death. Yeah, why well, wouldn't he told you be? Me, he said, I think the best thing for me and you to do is to not ever speak of this again. Okay. And I said, well, I said, you're probably right. I said, well, don't you think we need to, you know, call the, the game warden, you know, or, you know, the, you know, uh, wildlife people or, you know, something like that. Someone of authority, yeah. Uh, of course, you know, I'm not going to go against him, you know. Right. Because I didn't want no problems with, with him and then. Have problems with my wife, you know what I mean? Right, and what, inner family and issues. Her asking, you know, well, why did you and my dad get into it? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You don't want any inner so, family happy issues. Happy wife, happy life. Right. So, um, so, um, we came out there on a, um, on one of those, uh, razors. Yep. I don't know if you you know what that is. You, you know what a razor is. Yes, sir. Yep. We came out on a razor. And uh, he said, tell you what. He said, why don't you take the razor and uh, go back to the house. And uh, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more work out here. And I said, are you sure that's a good idea? You know, you being out here by yourself. Okay. You know, because I'm pretty sure that whatever that was was dead. I'm almost sure it was. Okay. Because, I mean, he, I mean, he poked it, prodded it, and everything. I mean, I, I mean, I just don't think it was alive. Right. And, uh, so, you know, me, I'm scared to death. I was more than happy to get on the race and get tail out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't care. You're like, screw this, I'm out of here. Yeah, screw this, let somebody else handle this mess. Yep. I'm out, you know. I don't want to be caught up in no kind of conspiracy theory. You know what I mean? If it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's one thing to to hear the stories but when you're face to face with it it's a completely different subject then yeah because I had seen um, I had seen the um, the uh, on the Howard Stern show that guy um, they call him Sean the Stutterer yep. he had sent in some video of a, a man dog yeah. that they had that was that he claimed was running and that they had caught on video running and like he was on his hind legs so when I look at the feet that very well could have been the same feet. Okay. They didn't look like dog feet, or how'd they look? Excuse me now? Did they look like, like, a, like a dog's foot, or did they look different? <sighs> yeah. 
I guess they kind of, yeah. Okay. I guess they kind of did in a way. Okay. Now that I think about it. But, I mean, it's nothing like that I had seen. Right, right. I mean, you could tell that it could move. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's not no, uh, it's not no slow poke. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. No, I've I've seen one in real life when when I was younger, and I know what what they they look very strange, yeah. but they can you can tell they're strong and they can run. Yeah, because the one that they showed on Howard Stern, this one here could, you know, this one here was moving. Right. I mean, I'm not saying it was moving like a cheetah. Right. A good, it you can know, move something at a good like that, pace. but I mean, it wasn't no. I mean, it was, you know, it was going. Definitely outrun a human. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I could outrun a human, no problem. All right, yep. So then, the next day, um, we had uh, we had to go up there for something. And he was back there on the back porch. And I said, uh, I said, hey. I got him off to the side there. I said, uh, I said, what did you do with that? He said, uh, he said, I took it up behind the barn. I shot it twice for 29 eyes with a 45. And I took my backhoe and I buried it eight feet in the ground. Okay. He said, and I dumped, uh, he said, I put, uh, lye on it. And then I got four bags of concrete on it. And the rest I filled with dirt. Flying <laughs> through his teeth. Wasn't it? So, now that's what he said. Right. Right. So, now, can I say that for sure? No. But, you know, I've known the man for over 10 years and the man's never lied to me yet okay so huh yeah so this thing's just it's gone now it's underground buried yeah all right yeah because he's uh he's not um i don't want to say he's anti-government yeah. But he, um, of course, he's a, he's a Trump supporter. Okay. But he's one of these people that thinks that the government has got too much control over us. Yeah. And that they, um, <clears throat> they know too much. Well, I'd agree with him there. Yeah, and and he told me, he said, well, he said, if I was to have, you know, called somebody and told them what we found, you know, this place would be covered up. Yeah, he was with, afraid to lose his yeah, farm. And everything else known to man out here. Right. And he said, that's just something that, you know, I didn't want to put you through. I didn't want to put my daughter through. His wife is uh, very ill, you know. Yeah. And I kind of see his point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's his livelihood. It's his farm. Why? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and, you know, and he says... He says, how do I know they wouldn't confiscate my farm? Right. I mean, this man's farm has been in his family for, he's got like, I think it's 300 acres. Okay. That has been in his family since, I think since the 20s. 
Yeah, it's it's his livelihood. He's not yeah. going to give that up. Right, absolutely, absolutely. You know, he's going to, <clears throat> you know, hang on to that. And see, they only have the one daughter. That's it. Right. They don't have no other siblings besides her, you know. And she don't want it, you know what I mean? Right. You know, she's... She could really care less, but, you know. So, let's get back to a couple questions, if you don't mind. Um, When you... <clears throat> Now, how do you feel about going out in the woods or out near the farm now? Uh, scared as hell. Right. <laughs> scared as hell. Now, did you were you a hunter prior to this? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I'm not a. Uh, no, I'm I'm not a hunter. I just, uh, you know, I got. I got deer that come around my yard. Right. But I got you're not. Area. I got, I mean, I could kill four or five deer standing off my front porch. Right. But I, I, I was uh, just asking because, like, you're not going out in the woods anytime soon now that you know that there's stuff uh, like this. No, I mean, I mean, I'm not scared to go out in the woods. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't live in fear, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, I ain't like that, you know. But to go over there, oh, no, no, no. Okay. No, I mean, I would go over there to help him. Right. You know, if he said, hey, you know, I need to, I need some help at the farm. You know, can you come over there and help me? You know, I would. I'd say, like, what's going to be in the daytime? You know, yeah, absolutely. We're not going to do it at night. You know what I mean? Yeah, yep. And nope. that's something else too. That's why I didn't want to really use my real name. Right. It's because he swore me to secrecy. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now because he was so afraid that you know to lose his farm. I mean, that's his. That's his world. You know, I understand completely. That's his livelihood. Yeah, yeah. I've got. You know, I mean, he does very very well right i mean he's got two tractors that i guarantee you are worth a hundred thousand dollars each right yeah so you how's know? he feeling so, about all this now is he just kind of kind of moved on like it didn't happen you know i haven't talked to him okay a whole lot about it i just know that when i talked to him that one day and I asked him what he done with it, and he told me what he done. I was kind of, I kind of got that impression that, you know, he kind of wants to be done with it. Right. Yeah. Just because of the. Now, if he was just out in the woods somewhere, you know, hunting somewhere, and you know that happened that would be different but being on his land he'd be like i don't know what the hell you're talking about right you know yeah never told you that was full of crap right absolutely no he's just too afraid of you know like his great he'd be his great great grandfather was the one who, you know, who started that. Absolutely. Well, I, so I, I understand where I, he's coming from because, yeah, you know, like I have a, my, my great uncle who's passed away now, his farm is, you know, it's now long gone, but if he could see what has become of it now, he would be flipping in his grave because, you know, old timer, that's their livelihood. They they put a lot of stock and pride into that. So yeah, I understand where he's coming from. I really do. Yeah, and I think that's what's going to happen when his when his daughter gets a hold of it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I love her and everything, but you know, 
I hope she does what he wants. You know what I mean? Right. But she hasn't said, you know, you know, he told her that once he's gone, you know, he really doesn't care. Right. You know what happens to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which I think, I think what she'll do is she'll sell it. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your evening to come on and talk with us about this. I, I mean, it's when DJ gave me a call and said, Hey, I got, you know, a buddy of mine that something really crazy happened to. I was, I was pretty excited. Um, you know, I know you don't feel good this evening, so I appreciate you taking time out of your evening to at least share, all all. to share this with us. So, um, I, once again, thank you so much. And, um, I'm going to end the interview, but I want to I want to thank you again um, and talk to you a few minutes after I end the interview. All right. So, Robert, okay. have a good evening. All right. Uh, you too. All right. Bye bye. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this bonus upload. Very interesting bonus upload. And, you know, growing up where I grew up, I know exactly what he's talking about. It's this large cylindrical tube with a very dull uh, pointed end that just goes right through um, hay bales to move them and uh, can't imagine the just the the sheer craziness that must have been occurring that night in that barn anyway guys with that Thank you for supporting the channel. Your support is truly what makes this channel so special and what continues to make the channel grow and go. Please, everyone, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. They are dangerous. Share a little bit of information, that same info we share here with each other on a daily basis with the people you love and care about, and it may just save their lives someday. Always push back. God bless.